So let's take a look at snapshots in a little bit more detail. As we've said, a snapshot is a point in time capture of the state of a virtual machine. If the virtual machine was off at the time that the snapshot was taken, then we're capturing its state, all of the virtual machine settings, and obviously everything that might be saved inside of a VHD file. Uh, we can capture that state. If the machine is running, then we are capturing the virtual machine settings as well as the stuff that's running in memory as well as anything that's changed uh, on the VHD files themselves. So architecturally, what does this look like? Let's take a look. First of all, I have a virtual machine, and let's say that virtual machine is indeed running in memory. The virtual machine is made up of a VHD file, as well as its configuration files for the virtual machine itself. The main thing is the VHD file. Now, if that is currently running in memory, then the VHD file that we have stores all of the data. However, we've got stuff running in memory. Okay, so that would be representative of what I like to call the now. Right, so it's currently running in memory. And there are a couple of different files that are used to sort of store some of the uh, uh, memory settings, but otherwise, for the most part, it's just running in memory. It's a live running computer. Now, if I were to take a snapshot, uh, what a snapshot does is it captures everything that has changed since that VHD was essentially created. So it's taking all of your configuration changes, it's taking all of these various different elements that are essentially represented by the now, stuff that's currently running and that has existed uh, or been created on this computer since the original VHD was created. Okay, so we take that now and we essentially save it to what's known as an AVHD file. And that now goes away. So the computer itself, the VM, is a combination of the original VHD plus all the changes that have now been saved when we took the snapshot, they've been saved into this AVHD file, stored essentially side by side with the original VHD. So it's the combination of the two. And now I have a new now, the stuff that's running in memory since I took that snapshot. Okay, and so I continue to work, I continue to make changes, and then I take another snapshot. The next snapshot would be saved as yet another AVHD file. Let's get rid of that now. And I have a new now, the current uh, in-memory allocation of what's been happening. So the virtual machine, let's say I shut it down. Then everything that is uh, that exists for that virtual machine is the combination of all of these snapshots. The original VHD and then the next AVHD plus the next AVHD and so on down through the hierarchy up to 50 snapshots. That's what's supported in Hyper-V. So it's a combination of all of these and they combine together when you start up the virtual machine in order to present to you a consistent C drive, right? So sort of similar to what we might describe when we talk about differencing disks, because in reality, these are differencing disks. We have the original VHD, which would be analogous to the parent disk, and then we have our differencing disks in this form of an AVHD snapshot. Now, at any point in time, I can revert or apply a snapshot. So I can choose to go all the way back to the original if I wanted to, and apply that, thereby deleting any of the changes that were saved to the system uh, when these snapshots were taken. So I can remove all of those if I wanted to, uh, applying this snapshot. Or I can go to any one of these snapshots and apply them as a point in time rollback. It's essentially the equivalent of like the undo button in Word, letting me roll back the system to a point in time. So if in this time frame right in here, I had applied a service pack, and then that service pack got all screwed up and I'm not happy with it and I want to roll back to a point in time before we ever tried to install that service pack, I can do so by applying this snapshot. So it's a very flexible um, architecture allowing me to roll back system-wide changes. Now keep in mind we're rolling back everything. It's not just system changes, it's also data. Anything we've done in that timeline 
would get rolled back if I were to apply one of these snapshots. Now the nice thing is that the AVHD files don't go away. In other words, if I come to this top level and apply this snapshot, I'm not losing these other snapshots. I can actually go back and forth in my timeline as much as I want to. I'm capturing and it's preserved. I would have to physically go in there and actually choose with a right click in the console and choose to delete a snapshot in order to get rid of it. And At that point, I wouldn't be able to uh, use that snapshot anymore. I can also delete a snapshot tree. If you see that option in there, that's a way of going to the top of the hierarchy and saying delete all snapshots below it uh, from that point on down as well. So that would be deleting the uh, snapshot subtree. An important thing to keep in mind is as long as this virtual machine is actually running and executing in memory, when you delete snapshots, the AVHD files don't actually go away. They're still there. They disappear out of the console, so you can't see them and you can't apply them, you can't work with those snapshots anymore, but the AVHD files themselves don't go away until you shut the computer down. When you perform a proper shutdown or just power cycle it and turn it off, when there is no power to that virtual machine, it will take all of the data that's contained in these VHD files. Uh, AVHD files and merge them into the original VHD to create a consistent VHD. Now that's assuming we deleted all the snapshots. If I only deleted one snapshot, then it would merge that deleted one into the one above it, thereby cleaning up the file system. And that's important to be aware of and important to do from time to time, is make sure your virtual machine gets shut down and then you'll see a status in the console where it says merging. And you should let that merge complete before you power up uh, the virtual machine again. You want to make sure it's cleaning up after itself. Because as long as your hard drives are a um, combination of VHD and AVHD files, you will lose some disk I.O. performance. Not much, it's fairly negligible, but because of that, this is uh, why it's not recommended to do snapshots on production servers. You would instead want to do snapshots in a test environment, in a lab environment, development environment. It's great for that type of environment. If we think about training or we think about uh, lab testing, the amount of times that we have to revert back to a starting point for our lab tests uh, is significant. And in the past, before we had virtualization technology, we pretty much had to re-image a computer back to a starting point before we could test a different scenario. Now we can test scenarios one after another and just keep reverting back. And it's as if we never made any of the changes that we, that we did. The other thing to be aware of with snapshots is it's a little tricky uh, with databases. For instance, like a domain controller that stores all the account credentials in a database. Not the best idea to be doing snapshots on a domain controller because all other computers depend on that computer. So if you're rolling it back in time, you could affect secure channels and connections between computers uh, in the domain. Doesn't mean you can't do it. We do it all the time in training environments, but when we roll back the domain controller, we also roll back all the other computers in the lab at the same time. So we're not losing any secure channels. So that's just a little look at the concept of snapshots and what's happening underneath uh, in the architecture.